All right, Shalom. I'm going to begin this lesson by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah, Waha Rakakwadash, which in the ancient Hebrew tongue would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, His beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit. I also would like to give double honors to my teachers, the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much due honors and respect to the sincere brethren out there that's also laboring in his work. And as always, I want to say Shalom to the believers, you know, the Akim as well as the Aqua, which will be you brothers along with the sisters that subscribe to this truth as well. So, yeah, just wanted to go into another quick lesson, you know, pretty much, and as always, continuing in the spirit and theme of prophecy, which one of the more subtle yet dynamic prophecies, so to speak, would be the divine revelation, if you will, of the devil and Satan that the Bible speaks of, which would be none other than who? The so-called white man. <laughs> And we come to that conclusion based upon, if nothing else, this man's works alone testifies against him. See, the so-called white man in his natural habitat is actually proof that he would be the wicked that the Bible speaks of, you know. But upon, you know, research, you know, due to research, especially in relation to the words devil and Satan, where the decision is unanimous, again, it would be none other than the so-called white man. All right. Which, by the way. When you go into that word devil, it simply translates to deceiver, okay, which the so-called white man is indeed guilty of that offense. The mere fact that the nations is under this veil, okay, uh, associating themselves with these corporate names, right? But that all goes back to the so-called white man, see? Not to mention, you know, the uh, misinformation, disinformation that's on display. This man, you know, intentionally uh, distorting history you know, placing a smoke screen before you, right? That proves that he would be that deceiver which pursuing the prophecy, and in particular, the book of Revelation, the 20th chapter around the fourth or fifth verse, I believe, it tells you how the devil, you know, will come out of obscurity and pretty much in the Renaissance period and his pursuit of power, it would be based upon deceiving the nations. See that? So that would be none other than the so-called white man. All right? So that word devil translates to deceiver. Now, when you go into this word Satan, which I have queued up right here in the Hebrew word, that would be Shatan, right? It says adversary, one who withstands, see? So the so-called white man is adverse to the standard, if you will. And what would that standard be? The law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. This man is adverse. He opposes everything that the Heavenly Father has laid out. Now, what I wanted to do is stroll down here to the Strong's definitions, and one of the words that would be opponent, right? So let's click on this word real quick, opponent. It says someone who competes against or fights another in a contest, game, or argument, a rival or adversary, all right? But when you stroll down to the second definition, it says a person who disagrees with or resist a proposal. See, let's read this again. A person who disagrees with or resist, see, a proposal or practice. And in this case, that proposal, again, would be the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. So this man is a resistant force. All right? This man opposes. He's the oppositional force, if you will, to righteousness. See that? So when you come across the words devil and Satan, then... If you are viewing things through spiritual lenses, because you have, you know, most of you out there who claim to build your foundation off the scriptures and in your perception of, of the devil or Satan, <laughs> you know, it goes back to someone in the underworld waiting to possess and torment your soul forever and ever. <laughs> you know, some guy in a damn red spandex suit, right, with a set of horns, a, a pointed tail and a pitchfork or a triton in his hand which is nothing more than a cunningly devised fable, which goes back to who? The so-called white man himself, man, <laughs> in his Greek mythology, which that word mythology means the study of myths. See? So there's no way around it, man. The devil, the deceiver, the liar, right, would be none other than the so-called white man, right? And that's one of his, that's one of the aspects, if you will, when identifying and targeting this man, but also, we just went into that word Satan, which goes back to the Hebrew word Satan, which literally means adversary. 
This man is adverse to everything that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh has laid out. All right. Which brings me to the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and starting at the sixth verse. It says, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh upon the children of disobedience. See, upon the children of disobedience. Yeah, and who would these children of disobedience be? The Edomites. <laughs> and in particular, the very so-called white people that you see walking here on the planet Earth today, they would be considered the children of their forefathers who was indeed disobedient. You know, when you go back to the serpent in the garden, that was an Edomite, man. And he knew the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, yet in a campaign to overthrow Israel, which that's the MO of these devils to this very day, he finessed Eve, man. <laughs> and it was all driven by his disobedience, see? The same with Cain. He knew what the Heavenly Father required of him, you know, in relation to that sacrifice, yet he disobeyed, and no different with Esau, okay? So the Edomites, the very so-called white people that you see here today would be the children of that disobedience. See, again, let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh upon the children of disobedience. Matter of fact, let me grab something real quick before we continue. Right here in the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the third chapter, and starting at the 10th verse, it says, but the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations. See, but the ungodly will be who? The so-called white man. You have ungodliness in the planet Earth, right? But the source of that ungodliness is the ungodly. <laughs> You know, the same with wickedness, the wickedness that have exceedingly polluted throughout the planet Earth. Well, guess what? There's a source to that wickedness, and it would be none other than who? The wicked, which pursuant to the book of Malachi, the first chapter, around the third and fourth verse, would be the so-called white man. See, again, it says, but the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations, which have neglected the righteous and forsaken the Lord. For whoso despise of wisdom and nurture, he is miserable and their hope is vain. Their labors unfruitful and their works unprofitable. And that's what you're witnessing right now. You know, these devils scrambling in an attempt to crown an enterprise of success, which will be in the form of bringing about their new world order. Well, guess what? That labor would be unfruitful, man. That work would be unprofitable. And indeed, their hope is vain. You know, you got these devils in this rallying cry of making America great again. Well, guess what? That's a vain hope. <laughs> See, again, for whoso despise of wisdom. And nurture, he is miserable, and their hope is vain. Their labors are unfruitful, and their works unprofitable. Their wives are foolish, and their children wicked. See, and their children wicked. And those children is concerning the Edomites that you see here to, to this very day. Your child comes after you, man. See that? So when you go back here again to Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and again the sixth verse, let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah upon the children, see, upon the children of disobedience, meaning this is the generation the Lord chose to spring into action concerning judging you devils, man. Here in this lifetime, that judgment, that wrath is going to come upon the children of disobedience, <laughs> the offspring, you know, of your forefathers, right? Now, when you click on this word disobedience, What you want to pull up real quick. Strong's G 543. Apithia. Apithia. Yeah, so that's the pronunciation for that word disobedient in the Greek. And it says obstinacy, obstinate, opposition to the divine will. See, opposition <laughs> to the divine will. Remember, we looked up that word Satan. Right in the Hebrew, the word that would be shatan, which literally meant adverse, being an adversary or opposition. <laughs> See, so when the scripture speaks about the children of disobedience, which we know to be the so-called white man, well, that translates to you being the devil and Satan, man. You know, I was looking at uh, some numbers concerning different nations, you know, and those nations who are more accepting, if you will, to homosexuality versus those who are not. And the so-called white man ran away with it, man. I believe the numbers was like 79% of 
of Edomites who had no problem with homosexuality. Why? Because they was designed, it was woven in their DNA to be opposition, <laughs> you know, to the divine will of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh You know, when you consider the laws, and in particular the book of Leviticus, the 20th chapter and the 13th verse, where it clearly states, if a man lies with mankind as he lies with a woman, they have both committed an abomination and they shall surely be put to death. Well, the so-called white man turned right around and celebrated homosexuality, man. And this man go as far as protecting homosexuals. You know, you have to tread light if you have somewhat of a voice. You know, you have a platform, whether it's in the form of, of being a talk show host. You might have a, a radio show, all right? Well, when concerning the LGBTQ, you got to tread light, man. Else these devils will step in and they'll, you know, they'll penalize you. They might hit you with a fine. You know, and altogether, they might compromise your livelihood. See? So that's a direct offense in the eyes of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. The Lord said to put to death homosexuals, man. But the so-called white man, you know, he encourages it. See? Why? Because he's an opposition to the divine will of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. See that? So when you go back here, again, to the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and again, starting at the sixth verse, let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah upon the children of disobedience, where well, those children of disobedience would be none other than the so-called white man. You can't dispute that. <laughs> See that? But we just looked up that word disobedience, and it translates to opposition, right? Which is on par with being the devil and Satan, which again, that word Satan translates to being adverse, you know? You are opposition to the standard, which in this case will be the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashem and Yahweh Shah. See that verse 7. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes in darkness, see, but now are ye light in the Lord. Yeah, so we was in darkness, you know, meaning we at one point subscribed to the misinformation and disinformation that the so called white man, you know, presented, you know, whether it was in the form of these institutions and universities or whatever rhetoric that was pushed forth. You know, anything outside of this truth will be considered darkness. See, again, for ye were sometimes in darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. See, meaning we have information. We have been enlightened now. So we have to walk that walk. There's a path that we have to walk, which we have embarked on in the form of this doctrine. See? Verse 9, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. See that? Verse 10, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship, see, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, meaning the so-called white man, but rather reprove them, see, but rather reprove them. And you have certain of those out there who get all messed up because we get on these devils, man, but we was commanded to do so. <laughs> and that was spoken of also in the book of uh, Ezekiel, the 35th chapter, where the Lord commanded us to uh, prophesy against Mount Seir, the so-called white man. And why wouldn't we? <laughs> Everything this man has laid up, this system itself is in direct contrast to the will of Yahweh Bashem and Shah. See that? Again, it's an oppositional force. See, it's adverse to whatever Yahweh Bashem and Shah has laid out. See? Again, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Yeah, let's read this again. For it is a shame, <laughs> see that? For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret, man. You know, you do the research for an example. You got the Bohemian Grove where you got these devils come together, a bunch of old Edomites with breathing machines and shit, chasing each other around, you know, in the woods naked. I ain't making that up, man. That's what these devils do. You know, they have these uh, child, child sacrifices. See that? You know, the things that happen behind closed doors, they have the orgies, man. You know, homosexual acts. See? It's a shame to even speak of those things. Again, it says, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. Right, and this light 
would be symbolic to this word. This word going forth is shedding a light on the dark works, the works of darkness of the so-called white man. You know, that was a time where the people, they had no clue, you know, about, um, you know, the Illuminati, these secret societies, man. You know, what goes on in the dark, these sacrifices, blood sacrifices, man. Now that's coming knowledge. Why? Because we're in a time where that light is being shed. See? Again, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever do of make manifest is light. See that? So this must be the truth. <laughs> because, you know, for an example, if this wasn't the truth, why would you have these YouTube guidelines? You have a so-called white man compromising these different channels. You know, these different platforms where brothers uh, push forth truth. If this was just a bunch of disgruntled so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans venting, you know, well, why is the so-called white man putting so much time, energy, money, and resources into trying to, you know, muscle this word from going forth? Because that's that light that's exposing, you know, these works that's done in the dark. See that? So this man in his, his very nature, you know, the so-called white man in his natural habitat is proof that he's the devil, man. <laughs> His works alone testifies that he will be the devil and say that the Bible speaks of. So, so y'all just wanted to touch on that, Lord willing, it was edifying. Till the next time I say, Salawan.